Many marriages end in divorce. Divorces are really sad, but fictional divorces can be really fun, such as Noah Baumbach's Marriage Story, Manchester by the Sea, and of course, Elden Ring. Elden Ring is absolutely brimming with divorces. In this video, I will rank all of Elden Ring's many divorces on a tier list. Let's get started. The divorce of Renala and Radagon is probably the most detailed divorce in the entire game. To tell you the truth, this was the divorce that got me into the hobby of divorce watching. When you first stumble upon Renala, she is locked up in a tower at the top of Raya Lucaria Academy. Renala is very sad and despondent. Any veteran divorce watcher will tell you that this is a sign that a divorce took place. In the same room, you can find a statue of Radagon behind her. However, there is no Radagon in sight. This is really sad. How could such a thing occur? If you talk to Turtwig at the Church of Vows, it explains to you how Radagon and Renala met in a romantic comedy from the early 2000s. Basically, he led a great golden host into battle against her. It was a whole will they won't they thing. Eventually, he gave up and married her. For a while, life was good. They got it on like a Bioware game and had a handful of children. However, soon disaster would strike. I don't know if you have ever read any Italian novels about women being abandoned by their husbands, but that's basically what happened here. When Marika hounded Godfrey from the lands between she pulled out her arc phone and called up Radagon. He then just straight up left Renala behind, alone, in a tower. Now this is really sad as it is, but there is something else that makes it even worse. Therefore, before I can rank Renala and Radagon's divorce, we need to take a look at Marika and Radagon's divorce. Is it possible for a divorce to result in a massive loss of life? To result in a world-shattering apocalyptic event? Not in real life. Probably not in real life. However, in the lands between, one divorce was strong enough to ruin everything. We have already established that Radagon is kind of an awful person, with his whole Italian novel about a woman being abandoned by her husband thing, and that Marika was probably just as bad due to her treatment of Godfrey, and how she destroyed Renala's marriage. So you are probably wondering how Marika and Radagon ever got divorced. It sounds like a match made in hell, right? Two garbage people. Well, not really. As you find out at the end of the game, Radagon and Marika are actually the same being. Which begs the question, how exactly does this even count as a divorce then? Well, it's easily the weirdest divorce in the game. Basically, the Radagon half is loyal to the greater will, while the Marika half was loyal up until the whole Godwin business. She threw a tantrum when her son Godwin's soul was assassinated by Rani. Personally, I don't get it. It really wasn't a big deal, and Marika should have gotten over her son dying. However, she didn't, and as a result, she shattered the Elden Ring. This is what caused the apocalypse apocalyptic state of the lands between, that you explore over the course of the game. Her Radagon half, which is still loyal to the greater will, is trying to repair the Elden Ring, as you can see in the intro when it flashes between them. So while they never went to divorce court or anything, their relationship is absolutely over. The very same relationship that they basically had with themselves. This divorce is D tier. It's a weird one and doesn't really count as a proper divorce. Now we can return to the Renala and Radagon divorce ranking. Personally, I feel that Renala's divorce is elevated by the fact that Radagon and Marika are the same person. Because this means that Radagon left Renala to be in a relationship with himself. This is such a profoundly bizarre thing to do. I cannot name a single Italian divorce novel where the husband was simultaneously the other woman. Therefore, I have to rank the Renala and Radagon divorce as S tier. It is a truly groundbreaking divorce. The divorce between Marika and Godfrey is a very strange one. It is probably the divorce with the least amount of information in the game. We know that Godfrey was this super badass warrior who became Elden Lord because Marika wanted his strength to help fight the giants. And we know how that turned out. Now that Marika and Godfrey were married, they did the usual stuff. However, Godfrey still liked to kill things. So he went and beat the crap out of the Storm Lord, which was Dragon Lord plus Hidusax. And when he did this, he lost the Guidance of Grace and became the first Tarnished. This is another way of saying that he no longer had any goals in his life and became deeply depressed. Naturally, Marika was a supportive spouse and helped him through this troublesome time, right? Nope, she just kicked him and his people out of the lands between. And then as mentioned earlier, she called up Renegon on her arc phone and kickstarted that whole affair. Not a very nice thing to do to someone, but hey, that's Marika for you. I assume that there could have been some friction in their household to prompt this. Godfrey seems like a stand-up 
up guy. He's really strong and he stands up. However, Moog and Morgoth are the children of Godfrey and Marika, and both of them were affected by the Omen Curse, which is not looked upon favorably to say the least. Maybe there was some behind the scenes drama in the household as a result of this that potentially caused Marika to divorce him. Who knows? To summarize, this divorce is just painfully average. It's a hard C tier, mainly because it's just a footnote when compared to the Renala divorce. The most disgusting, despicable, and demented relationship in the entire game is that of Moog and Mikula. Mikula is the twin of Melania, and Melania watched over him in Mikula's Halic tree. Eventually, she left to go get her ass beat by Radan because she sucks. This meant that Mikula was basically left defenseless because of a curse. These twins were cursed from their birth. Melania was infested with Scarlet Rot, while Mikula was cursed to be forever young. Yeah, that is weird, but it gets even more suspect. Moog is really creepy and obsessed with Mikula, so while Melania was away being an awful person, Moog abducted Mikula. He wanted to replace Marika with Mikula, so that way Mikula would become the almighty god of the lands between, and Moog could rule alongside him. We can assume that Moog put Mikula in this cocoon as a way of powering him up, kind of like a Dragon Ball, but instead, no dragon, just ball. Fortunately, this plan did not work out for Moog. Mikula just kind of sat there completely dormant. He did not communicate with Moog in any way. Moog was just completely ghosted by him. We can see that Mikula has been growing inside of the cocoon because this arm is really long. So he basically just scammed Moog for power and gave him nothing in return. That is the true Halig male grind set. You then enter the palace and forcibly evict Moog from his own house. So Mikula can take up permanent residency. That's why you are the greatest divorce lawyer. I have to rate this one D for disgusting, despicable, and demented. This is because it's just not a fun divorce. All of the ratings so far have been based on how fun the divorces are. Moog is just really creepy and weird. However, I need to mention that a bunch of you said that this is the best divorce in the game. I put up a poll on my channel, and 62% of people said that it was the best one. This is an understandable perspective, because it does represent an end to a really weird and messed up relationship, so it gets the honorary title of the most necessary divorce. The next divorce is a bit of an obscure one. Only true Elden Ring divorce aficionados are aware that this one even exists. It's the divorce of Yura and Eleonora. This is a deep cut, because if you complete Yura's questline, you might not even realize that you just officiated a divorce. You were the divorce lawyer, and your blade was the settlement. If you aren't familiar with Yura, he basically hunts bloody fingers. These are a group of people who shove their fingers up their until a and gets blood all over it. You can first encounter him at the lake in Limgrave by the seaside ruins bonfire. He warns you about a nearby dragon and pretends to be impressed if you slay it. In his next encounter, you get invaded by a bloody finger and after a little while, Yura will join your game and together you will beat his ass. He will then explain where the bloody fingers put their fingers. After this, you can find him outside of Raya Lucaria and help him. Once you defeat the enemy, Yura opens up to you about his divorce. Kind of like some random midlife crisis guy at a bar. He tells you about how he is hunting Eleonora. She is a bloody finger. If you take a look at the description of his armor, it basically spells out their past relationship. In his next encounter, you find him lying down on the ground, so naturally you immediately help him. He fell against Eleonora in a battle. As he lays there dying, he begs for her to reconsider their divorce. Please, please, Eleonora, yield the cesspit no longer. However, he soon dies and Eleonora invades. She's actually quite strong, but she is no match for the power of New Game Plus. And so ends that divorce. It's quite an obscure divorce because you need to get to the end of Yura's questline to see it. And also take a look at his armor description. All in all, as far as divorces go, this is a pretty good one. It is solidly A tier. The last divorce we are looking at is your divorce. Namely, the one between you and Rani. Think about it. When you got the Age of Stars ending and married Rani, 
you had probably only known her for about 30 to 40 hours of gameplay, so you went from complete strangers to ruling over the stars together for the rest of eternity. All of that happened in such a small span of time. That is not a healthy foundation for our relationship. There is no way this will last. You should have married the Dung Eater. So what is the final ranking then? In S tier, we have Renala and Radagon. In A tier, we have Yura and Eleonora. In B tier, we have Bombert and Grunch. In C tier, we have Marika and Godfrey. In D tier, we have Marika and Radagon, Moog and Mikula. If you enjoyed this video, you should subscribe to my channel. It would look great on your resume.